Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I need to correct a statement I made last week. Uh, last week, as we were looking forward to the coming Sunday, I told the men to bring padding for their rumps because they were probably going to get kicked. And that was wrong. Okay? And it was wrong because it's not my job to kick your behind. That's, that's God's job. That's, that's the Holy Spirit's purpose. Um, for years, I refused to go to church on Father's Day. And you will never, hopefully, never hear me speak a message of admonishment to fathers on Father's Day. I just, I got tired of going on Father's Day and getting beat up because I was a dad. It stunk, okay? Uh, then a brother in Christ spoke some truth to me and asked me about the precedent I was setting for my sons about not going to church on Father's Day. And uh, I, I had to rethink the whole deal. So, my job this morning, my goal is not to kick anyone's behind, but to wrestle with the truth of God's Word. To see how this plays out, how it works, how it should work. So, if you have your Bibles, if not, there's a Bible in the seat in front of you. Um, let's turn to Ephesians chapter 5. Now, we have been working through a family affair. Uh, we have been dealing almost exclusively with husbands and wives. Um, this, this week I'm hoping to wrap up this section so we can move on to some of the other family relationships that scripture addresses. We talked about how God created, how sin perverted, and how Christ is restoring the nature of relationship between men and women, husbands and wives. Um, we have dealt with uh, what scripture says to the wives, and, and ironically enough, um, God didn't just have a word for wives, but he also has a word for husbands. Now, before I get into this, there's something that we need to be clear on. Okay. A couple weeks ago when I addressed wives and their role and what scripture has to say about them, who was that for? It wasn't for the husbands. It's for the wives. Because scripture addresses it to the wives. Our place as husbands, while we are aware of, are aware of those scriptures, is not to be our wives Holy Spirit okay conversely today when we look at these passages about husbands who am I talking to husbands okay now wives now it's your turn to mind your own business okay because one of the, the, the greatest travesties in the church throughout its age is reading scripture for somebody else's sake. Okay? Uh, that's, that's where we get into uh, declaring ourselves to be the judge. James makes it clear there is one judge. Okay? So wives, uh, I invite you to participate, uh, hearing what's going on, hear the word that the Lord has for your husbands. Um, I would encourage you if you see your husband failing in these things, pray. Okay? Do what 1 Peter says. Pray. Let your actions be your voice. Okay? You don't need to talk. Okay? 
I, I find that very interesting that Peter uh, actually tells women that they might be, their husbands might be won over without <coughs> words. Okay? Um, women have a lot of words. <laughs> they, you do. Okay? Um, you know, I am the, the little eight pack of Crayola in colors. And Christy's like the great big 256 pack. And she she has names for colors that I'm 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 convinced she just made up. But then again, all colors names were made up, so I don't know what's wrong with that, except mine is that's brownish. That's that's kind of purplish. Um, and she's got, oh, chartreuse, whatever the heck that is. I, I don't even know what that is. Puce. <laughs> That's a color? Yeah. Okay. Taupe. No, taupe is every color. No, 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 that is not in my eight pack. All right, so, men, husbands, if you are a husband, you want to be a husband. Being a husband is in your future. This message is for you today. Okay? Um, Ephesians chapter 5, and it's parallel in, in Colossians chapter 3. Paul is dealing with the church and the relationships in the church, and at this point specifically about wives and husbands. Okay? Um, we looked a couple weeks ago about, about wives, and we talked about submission and respect. Um, the example that Paul uses in, in Ephesians 5 is that um, wives are to submit to their husbands as the church submits to Christ. Okay? Now today we're going to flip that coin over and we're going to look at the other side. So, uh, if you would pick up with me, chapter 5, verse 25. Okay. Husbands, love your wives. Now, if I stopped right there, um, what is that? Uh, I think it's the Beatles song, All You Need Is... Yeah, that's... that's uh, sorry. Divorce rates today are showing us that's not the case. Okay, um, if, if we were to stop it right there, we could we could make a message just off of this. Okay, but God doesn't stop there. Okay, He doesn't just put a, a statement out there. I mean, if I were to say, um, I don't know, uh, I love steak. That's kind of a strong word. I prefer steak to hamburger, but I don't know that I love steak. Um, I love my truck. It's right outside. <laughs> Anybody else know that song? No, I'm not going to sing it for you. Okay. <laughs> but I do love my truck. My kids will periodically, my grandkids will ask me, um, Papa, if you could have any car in the world, what car would you have? My truck. Yeah. I like my truck. I, I don't see the need for anything else, except when I'm at the gas station, then I think, <laughs> you know. Um, but in dealing with love, we use that word to cover a lot of things, okay? Um, I love Christy. I love my family. Um, I love this church. I love SpaghettiOs with meatballs. <laughs> I love my dogs. I love my house and my bathroom. Okay. If, if you ever had five children in a house with one bathroom, you'll understand why I love my bathroom. Okay. Um, but we use that word to cover a huge spectrum of things. But God doesn't stop there because he gives us an example what this is supposed to look like. Okay, um, Husbands, love your wives. How? As Christ loved the church. And we could stop right there too, couldn't we? Okay. But, but God didn't. He didn't stop there. 
He's continuing on the example. Why do you suppose he's, he's continuing on this example? Well, I know for me it's because I can be thick. I can be slow. Um, what love looks like to me is very different than what love looks like to Christy. Okay? If, if you're not really sure that that's the case, go to the, uh, the bookstore and, and look in the self-help books and look at the relationship books and look at all of the hundreds and thousands and hundreds of thousands of pages that have been written about this. Okay? Um, I struggle with the concept of love because it tends to be so overly used, so generalized. I think it's diminished in its value. Okay, uh, But he, God doesn't stop there. He doesn't stop it as Christ loved the church. He goes on and he says, and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Okay. How many of you would agree with the statement that husbands are different than wives? Four, five, six, seven of you. Wow. How many of you would agree that men are different than women? Okay. If you haven't picked up on that yet, you got something coming. Okay. God created us to be different. God's design, God's intent, was not to make us the same. Okay. So when God created, He created with purpose. He created with plan. He created beauty, and sin came in and corrupted it. Now, when we come to Christ, we have so much wrong thinking that needs to be corrected that sometimes, you know, I'm not even sure where to start. Thank God that he sent his spirit, okay? Because the spirit takes you through the process if you're willing, okay? So, husbands, love your wives. Uh, any, anybody in here? No offhand, but uh, let's, let's put this just to the men. Uh, what the Greek word there for love is? Agape. Agape, agapeo. Now, uh, I mentioned this a couple weeks ago. You will notice in this passage, and, and actually let's look over at Colossians real quick and we'll come back to Ephesians. Colossians is kind of like the mini version of Ephesians. Okay, so uh, Colossians chapter 3, I'm just going to hit this really quick. Um, evidently, the, the people in Colossae uh, picked up things much more quickly than they did in Ephesus. Uh, so in verse 18, Paul writing, uh, so it's Colossians 3 verse 18, Wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Okay. Now, hold on to that thought. Do not be harsh with them because we're going to come around to that thought as we go a little bit further today. Okay. So, first thing, love, agapeo. Now, in Scripture, there are three words used for love. I've, I've mentioned this before. Just recap very quickly. 
Um, there is a fourth word in the Greek for love that's eros. It's not in the Bible, okay? Uh, in the Bible, the, the three words that are used are um, phileo, which is the, the kind of love that you have for your brothers. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, Philadelphia, uh, the city of brotherly love, that's, that's literally the translation from the Greek, phila, phileo, delphia, okay? So it's, it's kind of like, uh, if you can picture it, um, maybe David and Jonathan, maybe Jesus and John, um, th that's that kind of love, okay? And then there's storge, all right? Storge, very similar to phileo, but deals more specifically in a smaller group, specifically your family, okay? Now, um, Will Rogers once said, do you, you guys know who Will Rogers is? Yeah. Okay. If you don't, just trust me, he said this. Okay. Um, Will Rogers said that uh, we should treat our friends like family and our family like friends. Okay. Now, um, Storge is the relationship, the love that you have, the kinship, the bond that you have with your family. Now, the problem with these interpretations is that depending on your relationship with your family, that might not mean anything to you. Pastor, you don't know about my family, but I do know about mine, okay? Um, I remember, uh, I've mentioned that my brother right above me, Todd, uh, we're very close in age. Uh, we did a lot of things together. And then hormones hit, and he became a different person. And then hormones hit, and I became a different person. And, you know, the two of us that used to pal around and, you know, go everywhere with our wagon and our skateboard and, and uh, go sledding down the, the hill on our cardboard and miss supper, um, all of a sudden, we didn't much like to be around each other. And... Um, he had lost a lot of uh, my store game for him. I had lost store game for him. Um, and we were uh, in high school, and uh, one of my distant relatives started going off on how much she disliked my brother. Now, keep in mind, uh, my brother and I had fought with fists, with feet, uh, one of the games we used to play, this was a game, okay? Um, I do not recommend that you tell the children this game. We would tie our wrists together, and we would put a tennis ball down at the other end of the room. And when you said go, your objective was to get to that ball first and pummel your brother with the ball, okay? This was a game, all right? And the first one to the tennis ball, you see, that's why you had your hands bound together, because if he was out in front of me, I could just rear back and pull him back away from the ball. But once he got the ball, guess what? I got pummeled. Now, I got the ball, I pummeled him, okay? Another game that we used to play, my dad used to have uh, ribbon tow ropes. Anybody know that the, they're about that wide and they're, they're pretty thin? Uh, we used to sneak him out of his, his car, and we would tie the end of the tow rope in a huge knot about this big, okay? And you'd have one person that would stand in the middle of the yard with a tow rope, and he'd start swinging it like this with that big old knot coming out, and then the objective was those that didn't have the rope had to run from one side of the yard to the other side of the yard and not get caught by the rope, okay? And the, the objective was supposed to be that you throw the knot at their feet, kind of like a bolo, and trip them and fall down, and they'd go flailing, and you, everybody would laugh, and then you'd get up and you'd do it again. Uh, the problem was, we didn't have very good aim, and so as often as not, you just got nailed with this huge wad of knot from a tow rope, and this was fun. Okay, so um, this is the, the dynamic, the nature of the relationship that I had with my brother. So this girl was going off and, and talking about uh, how much she disliked him and cutting him down. And you know what I did? Now keep in mind, uh, my brother and I, uh, we had fought with fists, with feet, with rocks, with dowels, uh, with knives. 
Okay. Uh, I think I was 12 years old, 11 or 12, and I got a Swiss Army knife for Christmas, and Todd got a buck knife. Before New Year's, they were taken away from us by our mom because we were using them to, to store gay each other. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom held those knives until we were married. When, when I married Christy, she gave me back my Swiss Army knife. Okay? Um, now, when she started bad-mouthing my brother, what did I do? Because everything she was saying, I agreed with. I told her to shut her mouth. Okay? I may not like him very much, but he's my brother, and I'm the only one that gets to not like him very much. Okay? So shut up. Okay? That's storge. Okay? The word used here, agapeo, is that unconditional love. Let me, let me give you an example of uh, agapeo. Um, your child wakes up in the middle of the night and they have 103 temperature and they're vomiting. Um, storge could lead you to, to attend to business. Okay. Get them some Tylenol, clean up the vomit, wash their face, put them back in bed. Agapeo stays to make sure they're okay. Agapeo does not begrudge them for the mess. Agapeo goes beyond just the immediate need of the moment. Uh, agapeo is love that is dependent on the giver, not the receiver. It is not based on your merit. Agapeo is a choice. Okay? You have to choose to love unconditionally. Now, of the loves that the Greek has, eros, from which we get the word erotic, that's the physical attraction um, that people have for one another. Um, that's chemical. Okay? You know, that's, that, that's hormones going off in your body. Uh, and, and believe it or not, uh, that will fade with time. Okay, uh, phileo, um, phileo is actually a pretty easy one because <laughs> you usually get to pick your friends, okay, and, and, and you love your friends, okay. Uh, Storge, <coughs> well, they're your family, you're stuck with them, okay, but they're your family. Agapeo looks at the situation, <coughs> not whether or not it blesses them, actually being aware that it may not bless them, and chooses to love them anyway. It is a love that requires discipline. Now I'm going to back up here. Um, I'm, I want to just hit uh, verse 25. Um, husbands, agapeo your wives, as Christ agapeoed the church and gave himself up for her. Now, husbands, How many of you would take a bullet for your wife? Okay. How many of you would risk harm to yourself to protect your wife? Okay. See, it's really easy to have that love in that moment. But the daily grind the, the ins and outs of daily life of two people with radically, radically different mindsets, radically different likes and dislikes, um, behaviors that, that one or the other can find not just annoying, but even maybe repulsive. Agapeo chooses to love in spite of that. It's the giving up daily, no, Hourly, no, moment by moment, okay? Now, um, we all do things that annoy our spouses, okay? Um, one of the things 
uh, God really taught me a lesson about toothpaste. Okay. <laughs> there are people that squeeze in the middle, and there are people that squeeze from the bottom. Okay, and and we worked this out really well. Christy squeezes from wherever she grabs hold of it, <laughs> and then I come in and I take the bottom and I squish it all back up. And and you, but see, there's there's I don't know how it happens. But there are bubbles on the toothpaste coming out of the tube. She's just brushed her teeth, and I open it up, and there's bubbles. <laughs> and I would tell her, I don't know what you're doing, but stop it. That's just gross. Well, this went on, I don't know, sweetie, how long did this go on? It was years. It's still going on. It's, it's not, it, it is not still going on. You know how I know? Because one day, I opened up and I... Oh, man! And I'm brushing my teeth, and she's off in a different part of the house, so I can't mumble at her about the toothpaste. And I'm brushing my teeth, put the lid back on, put it down, finish, wash. I, I walk out of the bathroom as I'm coming out, um, I'm not going to say God said, but I think God enlightened me. Go look at the two. Go look at the two. Okay. So I walk back in. I look at the two. Take the lid off. Okay. Take the lid off. There's a bubble. I had never taken the lid off after I brushed my teeth. Bubbles. There were bubbles <laughs> in the toothpaste. And it was one of those times, you know, when God just kind of flicks you upside the top of your head. And, and I thought, oh my gosh. Here I am doing the very thing that I have been getting after her for years about. And, and I am guilty of it. Why? Because I never checked it when I was done. I never looked. I never thought that I would be a bubble maker. Yeah. <laughs> I, that, that to me, I don't do bubbles. <gasps> That's an egregious offense. Yeah. But God showed me. And it was just one of those things where, like I said, I, I felt him prompt me to open it up and look. I have not complained since that day. Okay? So, these are things that, that we have to choose in the moment to love. Husbands, it is a task for us, okay? Because typically, men are not, um, we're not wired the same as women, and our needs are very different. When men talk, it's to exchange information. To transfer data. Okay. When women talk, most of the time it is to fill an emotional need. Okay. Women convey emotion through talking. Okay. And they have a lot of emotions. My, my scope for years was angry and not so angry. Those were my two emotions. Okay. Um, God has been teaching me uh, to actually allow whatever it is to be what it is. So in, instead of getting angry when I get hurt, I just get hurt. Okay. Uh, when, when I am offended, I have to examine why I'm offended. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm like a little kid. I'm trying to figure out all these emotions, it's no wonder you guys talk so much. You got all this stuff percolating inside of you. Okay? Men are not wired that way. Uh, I remember um, the last miscarriage that, that Christy had. Uh, we were actually at this church, and uh, we lost a child. Okay? And I was in the bedroom, we were getting ready for the day, 
and it was a day or two after we had found out. And uh, Christy came out, and I could tell she was bothered. And I hugged her. I didn't say anything. I just hugged her. And I let her cry. And I rubbed her back. And I just, I just held her. Now, my, my manliness wants a fix for this. Okay, but I don't have a fix. Conversely, when people came to me to say something about our loss, I don't want to talk about it. Leave it alone. I will deal with it in my own way. I, I appreciate the condolences. Kathy, I, I apologize to you because I was very short to you when you asked how I was doing because I don't want to dwell on it. I'll deal with it. I'll find a box, deep, dark, long, hidden away. I'll lock it up and I'll put it there. Okay? So we deal with things radically different. Now, is one better than the other? No, they're just different. That's one thing that I've had to learn with uh, my kids. My kids like music that I'm not sure actually qualifies as music. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure. But. Uh, Christy worked with me for years to teach me that it can be just different and it's okay. Um, my way is the best way. I'm a perfectionist. I know my way is better than your way. <laughs> no, my way is just different. Um, I, I, I've told you about Christy's stacks. I have my stacks. Don't touch my stacks. She has her stacks. I can't find anything in them. I don't go in her drawers. I don't go in her closet. I don't go anywhere that's her stuff because it's chaos in me, <laughs> okay? But I can ask her for anything and she can have it for me in usually under two minutes, wherever it is in the house, because she knows where it is. Her organization is radically different than mine, but it's organized because she can still find everything she needs, okay? So men, giving yourselves up momentarily. I'm gonna hit one point real quick here. Uh, Flip with me, if you would, uh, to 1 Peter. This is now uh, Ephesians and Colossians, where Paul, writing under the influence of the Holy Spirit, in 1 Peter, um, the author, at least the, the giver of this, was Peter. Uh, chapter 3, verse 1. Likewise, wives be subject to your own husbands, so that even if some do not obey the word, they may be won over without a word by the conduct of their wives. That's the passage I was referring to earlier. When they see your respectful and pure conduct. Okay? And he talks about uh, beauty coming from within and not without. Uh, and it comes down, he uh, uses Sarah and Abraham as an example. And we come down to verse 7. It says, likewise, as in the same way, um, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Okay, now, back in Colossians, we talked about do not be, we read, do not be harsh. Um, wives, you've got to bear with us. Because when we say things, there's not a lot of emotion connected to most of the things that we say. It's just information and data that we're, we're, we're processing out that you can receive the information, okay? Um, <clears throat> the problem with that tends to be is that we can come across as harsh or hard <clears throat> with no understanding that we actually were that way, okay? Um, I'll give you an example. Um, Mackenzie was in... Mm. sixth or seventh grade, I don't remember, maybe fifth. Um, she had taken a stand 
uh, for her faith and a number of her friends uh, really came down on her and, and well, they didn't want to be her friends and, and she was upset. And, uh, in my logical processing and thinking, I've got a simple solution. What would be my solution? Find Get different friends. Don't hang around with them. Okay? And I said that. I think I'm giving my daughter good fatherly advice. It got really cold in the truck. Christy was over there and Mackenzie was back there and I'm thinking, I don't know what happened. <laughs> There's a clue when they stop talking. <laughs> it's not because they've reached the end. Okay? And so, you know, 20 some years of being married and, and then, you know, with Christy and a little girl going, I, 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 I kind of pick up on some of these things. And so we got home and I looked at Christy and I said, did I do something wrong? And then the talking started again. <laughs> I came across as harsh. My heart toward my daughter was not harsh. I was hurt for her. I was looking for a way to make the hurt better. What she heard, though, was, um, you don't need friends. Suck it up, cupcake. <laughs> I didn't use those words. Okay? Um, I came across as harsh. My intention was not to be harsh. My intention was to help her resolve the problem. Okay? So do not be harsh. You have to think about how what you are saying sounds. If you're unsure, I, I have a challenge for you, men. I have a challenge for you. Record yourself. Seriously. Record yourself over the course of an evening. And then go back, if you dare, and listen to it. Okay? Why? Because you're going to understand that you do not sound anything like what's in your head. <laughs> okay? You, you don't. Um, there are a lot of times um, that, that Christian and I will be talking and all of a sudden things get frosty and it's like, what, what just happened here? <laughs> because I can sound harsh. My intent is not harsh. Um, I have learned that I do not say What's your point? <laughs> is, is that a good thing to learn, husbands? <laughs> If you haven't learned it, pick it up here. Okay? Any fool can learn from experience. It takes a wise man to learn from somebody else's experience. Okay? Um, we come across as harsh because we're looking for the point. When the point is there, we go to the solution. Women talk to work out their emotions. So most of the time, and, and try this, if you're not sure, ask your wife, do you want an answer or do you just want me to listen? Okay. You think, how silly is that? I still do it because I'm not sure. Okay, is this something you want? Are we conversing about this or are you just working your way through it? Okay. And for the most part, We, she wants me to listen, and then we get to the end, and she may or may not ask me what my thoughts are. Okay? So, do not be harsh. Men, if you dare, take my challenge. Record yourself over the course of an evening and how you sound when you talk to your wife. Um, now, down in verse 7, 1 Peter uh, 3, 7, Husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way. Notice it doesn't say understand them. It says, live with them in an understanding way. There are things that Christy does that just make no sense to me. They, they really don't. Okay? Um, that's just who she is. That's what makes her unique. Okay? Um, I don't have to understand why she does that, but I have to be understanding what she does. Okay? I don't have to figure out all the answers, but I have to deal with her in grace. The same grace that I want her to deal with me, I want to deal with her. Okay? Um, live with them in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel. Women, how many of you got offended when I read that? As the weaker vessel. You can put your hands up. That's fine. Okay. 
Women, are you the weaker vessels? Yes. It's, it's not a bad thing. Which is more valuable, a metal trash can or a porcelain vase? That's fancy for face. <laughs> which, which is more valuable? Yeah. You say a vase and it sounds more expensive, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is not an issue of value. God created women to be weaker, not necessarily in the way that you think. How would a mom be able to deal with that child in the middle of the night throwing up and vomiting without tenderness? See, see women are created to agapeo. They do that unconditionally. That's what makes them such great moms. Men, we gotta work at it. We gotta work at it. Okay. So, we're, we're, I'm a little bit longer than I wanted to. I'm gonna wrap this, this whole part up next week We'll start into uh, looking at other family relationships. Men, a couple takeaways that I want you to have here. You are called to love your wife as Christ has loved the church. You are called to give up your life for her. And that's not just in that moment when the bullet flies. That's moment by moment throughout the day, throughout the course. Okay. You are not to be harsh with them. You have to live in an understanding way. Understanding, folks, men, that they are every bit as much loved of God as you are. And, and actually, I'm going to turn that around because I know a lot of men typically think that their wives are very much loved of God, but they're not really sure that they are loved of God. God loves us equally. And in that equality, he loves us to the uttermost. 